I'm Scott Huggins. And I'm Jo Sinnott. We're in Turkey, one of the countries tipped to be an up-and-coming property hotspot. We'll be testing the waters to see if it really is the next big thing in the Mediterranean real estate market. And we'll be looking at the do's and don'ts of buying here. But before we get down to the bricks and mortar, let's see why Turkey is grabbing the attention of so many foreign house hunters. Turkey has a rich and varied history. What attracts most people is its coast. Over 900 miles of bays and sandy Mediterranean beaches, to be precise. And it's hot here, with around 300 sunny days a year and temperatures hitting 40 degrees Celsius in the summer. The country's tourist industry is booming as a result, with 18 million visitors in 2004, and numbers are predicted to rise at an average of 10% every year. Turkey is unusual in that it stretches across two continents. A tiny part is European, while the vast majority of the country is in Asia. It takes around four hours to fly from the UK, and most holidaymakers head for coastal resorts on Turkey's southwestern coast, which is also where the country's growing property market is strongest. Obviously, sun, sea and sand are attractions for holidaymakers and property buyers alike. But house hunters are also attracted by the low property prices here, with some apartments on the market from around £15,000. In comparison to Europe and other places or around the world generally, I, I do think Turkey offers great value and, and a lot for your money. So, of course, whilst that's happening, then, you know, Turkey will have a big market for overseas buying. The main attraction is for a lot of people here is the cheap cost of living. Many people coming here are retirement people and they find their pensions are stretching one hell of a lot further than they are back in the UK. The crime rate in Turkey is actually very low, um, so people often feel very safe living here. Um, and obviously, you know, it's a key thing for people buying property here. Turkey has existed as a modern secular state for less than 100 years and it has come close to financial collapse in recent years. It now seems well on the road to recovery with a GDP growth rate of over 7% in 2004 and possible EU membership is now on the horizon. Turkey became an official EU candidate country in 1999 and formal talks to allow it to take up full EU membership began in October 2005. Now, although negotiations are predicted to take around 10 years, and accession into the Union is by no means guaranteed, the prospect of EU membership is fueling interest in Turkey's property market. The country has had to introduce a number of economic and social reforms to comply with EU regulations, and it's generally accepted that, by and large, EU membership will be a good thing for Turkey's property market. I think Turkey is still perceived as something of a mystical East country and the added confidence of actually joining our club, the European Union, has given a lot of confidence to a lot of Western Europeans. Most people seem to think that if Turkey becomes part of the EU, then property prices in this country will rise significantly. It hasn't always been easy for foreigners to buy property in Turkey. It's only been legal for them to do so since 2002 and because of a court ruling in March 2005, the issuing of title deeds to foreigners was temporarily suspended. However, new laws were quickly drafted and it's now both legal and relatively straightforward to buy in the country. £80,000 will buy you this top floor two bedroom apartment with views of Bodrum. A four or five bedroom villa with pool in one of the best parts of the Bodrum Peninsula will cost between 200 and 225,000 pounds. Further north in Altincum, you can buy a three bedroom duplex on a complex with a communal pool from under 50,000 pounds. And 65,000 pounds will get you a renovated old house in Fetier. Unrenovated properties start from around 40,000. Now, all of those houses and apartments are on Turkey's southwest coast. Properties in the area generally offer reasonable rental potential from April to October, which is when most holidaymakers visit. The vast majority of tourists come to the coast by charter flight, but it is rumoured that the budget airlines will be allowed to fly into the more popular resorts. This will obviously increase the number of visitors and is likely to have a knock-on effect to the property market. 
One place that could benefit from the arrival of budget flights is Bodrum, an atmospheric town it has a history which stretches back over thousands of years. These days, Bodrum is a modern, cosmopolitan resort, popular with both package tourists and wealthy Turkish people. And now, the well-heeled locals and foreigners alike are starting to buy property here. Besides a 15th century castle, a famous mausoleum and a marina, the town also has good shops and restaurants and is renowned for its nightlife. The traditional two and three storey whitewashed houses give the whole place a distinctive look and feel. In fact, local planning laws restrict buildings to no more than three storeys. Because of its popularity with tourists, Bodrum is not the cheapest place to buy on the coast and some properties with harbour views can go for millions. Still, you can get two-bedroom apartments from around £55,000 and three-bedroom villas from around £95,000. The Bodrum Peninsula stretches west of Bodrum. Parts of the peninsula are fashionable with Turkish second homeowners and these areas can be expensive. However, local experts are touting the northwestern stretch of coast between Gamushluk and Yalakovac as the up-and-coming region on the peninsula. Now, although there are some apartments around there, most of the properties available are villas, so we went along to take a look at one. This here is a three-bedroom property on the Bodrum Peninsula. It's about 35 minutes from Bodrum and it's £165,000. So, let's see what you get for your money. OK, so this, this whole area is open plan downstairs. Quite nice. I mean, do you like open plan? Do you know, I do. I do, but I like to be able to separate areas off so it does still feel cosy. Yeah. And you do get that here. You get very much your living area and your kitchen. A nice kitchen as well. Yeah, really nice. I will say one thing. The specification on this is very good yeah. um, compared to other places I've seen. Now, you don't actually get a lot of the goods with this, you don't get the, the freezer, you don't get the cooker, that sort of thing, so you're paying extra for that stuff. You don't even get light fittings. No, or central heating. <laughs> so basically, for £165,000, almost the shell of the house, because you've got to spend so much money on those sort of things, but at least you can decide what your level is after that. And if you want to really push the boat out and buy expensive fridges and that, you can do. Similarly, if you want to budget, you can do that too. The one thing I would say, for £165,000, I kind of would have expected more of a house. But we won't know that until we have a look upstairs. We won't. Go on after you. Come on. Nice marble staircase, though. I think that's quite normal for Annie. I like these. Do you? Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> now, believe it or not, this is the largest of the three bedrooms. Is it? Well, mm. it's not exactly large for a large bedroom, I have to say. No. It's funny, though, because the whole place looks really spacious from the outside. It just gets smaller and smaller as you get into it. I know, and for the price, I kind of expect more. But I can see what you're paying for. I mean, let's go and have a look at this for you. Yeah. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, that... Do you know what? That is the nicest view we've seen from a property here in Turkey, without a doubt. And what's more, see that land down there, Greenbelt? So the view's not going to change. It's actually quite a cute-sized development as well. There's only ten properties here, all sharing one pool. Fantastic size. Really charming, I'd say. And talking about charming, this whole area is beautiful. This is one of the most desirable parts of the Bodrum Peninsula. So you're paying for location, aren't you? And view, and really it's a trade-off. The size of the property anywhere else on the peninsula would be bigger for this price. So trade-off between view or size of property. So it just depends what your priority is. And if you like a view, that's a view. Altincum is a resort about an hour and a half north of Bodrum and it's about two hours away from the international airport at Izmir which has direct flights to the UK all year round. Now Altincum means golden sands and as you can see the resort certainly lives up to its name because it's got three glorious stretches of sandy beach. A popular package resort, Altincum doesn't have the character of Bodrum town or the sea views of the Bodrum peninsula. Its main tourist attractions are the beaches and the nearby temple of Apollo. But what's putting Altincum on the property map is the fact that it's cheap to buy here. 
Altinkum's a new resort really. It's fast growing and especially so because of the property boom that's going on. I mean the prices up there, they're just incredible. You, you could be in your own home for as little as £25,000. Apartments account for about three quarters of Altinkum's real estate and rental potential in the holiday season is good. However, the building boom is making the market increasingly competitive. We have got like around 600 estate agencies in Altincum. Imagine each estate, two British contacts, is big market. Villas are more readily available in the villages around Altincum, and these areas also tend to be quieter than the main resort. Akbuk, for example, is six miles south of Altincum and has three bedroom villas from around £55,000. Alternatively, you could build your own property, as there's also land available with building permission. Well, there does seem to be plenty of property to choose from. So, to get a picture of the buying process, I met up with local estate agent Ishik Hashchavush. So, broadly, how do you go about buying property here in Turkey? It depends on the type of property you're buying, uh, whether it's resale or off plan. If you're buying resale, uh, you could get together with the seller of the property, make up your own timetable of events, mm -hmm. put down 10% deposit. The seller would then apply for military permission on your behalf. When that comes through, a visit to the land registry and the title deeds would be transferred to your name. It, and obviously that you would then make the 90% remaining as, as payment. But I must stress that it's important to use a solicitor. So obviously a solicitor can do a lot of problem shooting for you. What sort of problems are we talking about? Problems with title deeds or lack of, problems with the property being illegally built, no planning permission, problems with, with it being built on an archaeological site, which is illegal, problem with it being on a, on a green belt site, uh, problems with a sales contract that isn't valid. Sometimes the, the, the sales contract that people just put together without a solicitor isn't worth the paper it's written on. And uh, more, more importantly, it might actually be in a military zone, which is, again, totally forbidden. Now, tell me a little bit about the taxes and fees that are incurred when you're buying property here. Taxes and fees, there's property tax that uh, every purchaser has to pay, which is generally equally divided, which is 3%, generally equally divided between the buyer and the seller. There's the military permission fees, more importantly, which mm. varies from municipality to munici municipality. And there's also solicitor's fees. And have you seen a lot of, a lot of uh, interest from foreign investors recently? Certainly since Turkey started talks to join the EU, we've seen a lot of interest from our Western European neighbours. And are people buying the places to rent out or are they buying them purely as holiday homes? Lots of reasons, either to use themselves, either to move out here, either to rent or just for the capital growth. And how would you say the market looks like it's going to develop over the next few years? I think it will continue to flourish and, uh, and the capital growth will sustain. Coming up, we'll be house hunting further along Turkey's coast. And we'll be visiting properties with a past. <laughs>